In this video, let us talk about arrays in Java. So we use arrays to store a list of homogeneous elements, for example, a list of numbers, a list of strings, and so on. Arrays are reference types, so we can make use of the new keyword to declare an array. So let us declare an array of numbers. So right after the int keyword, to show that this is an array, and on the right side, within the square braces, we need to specify the size of the array. Then here we can say new int. So the new keyword is used to do dynamic memory allocation for our array. And here let us give the name for the array, so numbers. So 5 here denotes the size of the array. So here we are defining an array of 5 elements. Now if we want to access individual elements of this array, we can make use of the index of the array. So index 0 represents the first element of the array. So if you want to access the first element of the array, to reference the first item, we can make use of the index 0, the numbers, then the square brace and 0. And let us set this to 45. Similarly, we can set the second item to 34. So numbers 1, set that to 34. Now what if we use an invalid index, say 6, so numbers 6, and set this to 22. Now as you can see, here we are having an array of 5 elements, but we are accessing the index 6, which doesn't exist on the numbers array. So this should not work. So let us print the array. And let us compile the code and run the file to see the output. Java basics. So you can see we are getting an exception. Index 6 is out of bounds for length 5. Because here you can see that our array can have only 5 items and no more. So index 6 is an invalid one. So let me comment this out. And let us again compile the code and run the file. Now here you can see that we are getting this weird string instead of the items of the array. Now the reason for getting this output is that by default when we print the array, Java returns the string that is calculated based on the address of this numbers object in memory. Now the question that comes in our minds is that how we can see the contents of our numbers array. For that we have a class that we can use and it is known as arrays and is present in the java.util package. So let us import it at the top. So say arrays and select this arrays from the drop down and here we get the import. So arrays class is present on the java.util package. Now to access the members of this class, we can make use of the dot operator and then we have this two string method. We can call this method and pass our numbers array and this will return a string representation of our array. So let us try this, wrap this in the print line statement, system.out.println and if I now run the file, you can see now we are getting the contents of the array. So the first element of the array was set to 45. The second element of the array was set to 34. And all other items by default are set to a numerical value of 0 in case of integers. When we make use of the new keyword, right? Now for each of different primitive and reference types, we have multiple implementations of the two string method. So the idea of having multiple implementations of a method is known as method overloading which we will discuss later as well. So as in this output, we got first two items initialized to these values and all other items starting from index 2 till index 4, all the values were by default set to 0 because here we are dealing with an integer array. Had the array been boolean, all the items by default would have been initialized to false. Now what if we know the elements of the array ahead of time, then we can make use of the new syntax of initializing our array. So let us create a new array and let us name it as names. So this will be an array of strings. So string and array. So it will be an array of names. And here in this new syntax, we use the curly braces. And within this curly braces, we specify all the elements of our array. So Alex, James, Scene, now let us try accessing some of the fields and methods on our names array. So we have a length field using which we can find the length of our array. So names dot length. So let us try this out. And here you can see we are getting the output as 3 because in the names array we are having 3 elements. Now in the start of the video I told you that arrays are collection 
of homogeneous elements. So if you try adding a number to our names array and then run the file, you can see we are getting an error incompatible types int cannot be converted to a string. Now this therefore concludes that an array is a collection of homogeneous elements that have the same type and has a fixed size. So let me revert back. Now if you want to add additional items to the array or remove an element from the array that is growing or shrinking of an array, you should use one of the collection classes that we will discuss later in a separate video. So let us now move forward to multi-dimensional array. So we can create a two-dimensional array or a three-dimensional array or in general an n-dimensional array. So a two-dimensional array is called as a matrix. So we can create a two-dimensional array to store a matrix and extend it to any dimension that we want. Now let us see how we can create a two-dimensional array with five rows and seven columns. Now let us switch back to our drawing board and see the abstract and the memory view for our two-dimensional array. So in order to create a two-dimensional array, the syntax for declaring a two-dimensional array looks something like this. So int, then we use double square braces to indicate that we are creating a two-dimensional array. Then the name of the array, so let us say numbers, matrix. Then new n because here we are declaring an array of integers. So a two-dimensional array of integers where the number of rows is 5 and the number of columns is 7. So let us understand the abstract view for the two-dimensional array. So the abstract view of the two-dimensional array looks something like this. So we will have five rows. So one two, three, four and five and seven columns. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Now the indexing for rows will start from zero and goes on till the rows count minus one. So zero to four and the indexing for column will range from zero to six. Now if you want to access it this cell. So can you tell me how you can access this cell? So for this, we can say numbers, then we select the row. So we say we want the second row, so numbers 1. Then in this second row, we want the fifth element, which is this one. And this is how we get the value that is stored at this location, right? Now let us understand the memory view of the two-dimensional array or matrix. Now what happens in this case is that in the memory view we have the numbers matrix variable in our program and that stores the address of this entire array. So let us say this entire array is present at a memory address 0x100. So at 0x100 we have this array with five elements. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and the indexing goes from 0 to 4. Now each of these five elements in turn holds an address for other arrays. So let us say here we have 0x200, 0x300, 0x400, 0x500 and 0x600. Now let us say the array that is present at the address 0x200 has 7 elements. So this is at 0x200. Then the array that is present at the address 0x300 will also have 7 elements. Same for 0x400. So 0x500. And finally for 0x600.
So this array is present at 0x300, this one at 0x400, this one at 0x500 and this one at 0x600. Now let us try accessing numbers 1, 4 and see how it works in this memory view. So numbers here refer to the one dimensional array that we are having here. Now when we say numbers 1, we get this address. Now this address itself, now if you go to this address, you get this array which is sitting at the address 0x300 and now you want to access the fifth element of this array, right? So the fifth element for this array will be this one sitting at index 4. So if you want to access numbers 1, 4, you first access the second element of the one dimensional array which is numbers. Now once you have accessed the second element of this one dimensional array, you get an address for another one dimensional array. So you go to that and in that array you access the fifth element which is pointed to by index 4 which is this one. So if I now say numbers 0 0, so number 0 refers to this address. Now once you have this address, you go to that address, you find this array and then you access the first element of this array which is this one. So this is how you can access the elements of an array both by the abstract view and the memory view. Now coming back to our editor, let us create a two dimensional array int double square braces numbers matrix new int 5 rows and 7 columns. Now to access individual elements of the array, we need to supply two indices. First is the index of the row and the second one is the index of the column. Next let us go to the second row and third column and set some element to that location. So second row, so numbers 1 and third column 2 and set this to 45. So here we are setting the element that is sitting in the second row and third column to 45. Now let us print the array by saying system.out.println arrays dot dot to string and pass the numbers matrix to this. So let us take a look at the output. Yes, this should be numbers matrix. So let us take a look at the output Java basics. And once again, you can see that we are getting this weird string. Now here we are dealing with a multidimensional array. So instead of the two string method, we need to use other method for this which is deep to string deep to string so let us give this a whirl and now you can see our matrix is getting locked to the terminal so if you go to the second row and third column you can see the value of 45 so this is your first row this is your second row and in the second row the third value which is sitting at index 2 and the value there is 45 so here we get our matrix with 5 rows and 7 columns. Now what if we know the elements of the matrix ahead of time then we can create it using the new syntax. So let us define a new multidimensional array numbers matrix 2 and here we can make use of the curly braces and to define each row we can again use a curly brace to define a one dimensional array. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So each row will have 7 values. And in total we want 5 rows, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let me do this quickly. So in total now we have 5 rows and 7 columns. So here numbers matrix 2 is a 2 dimensional array with 5 rows and 7 columns. Now let us print the array to the terminal. So system.out.println arrays dot and we again need to use the deep to string method and pass on the numbers matrix to to this and let us see the final output so here you can see we are getting five rows and each row we have seven values so five rows and seven columns <coughs> so this was all i wanted to cover about arrays in java if you like the video do give it a thumbs up or comment down below if you have any query don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's catch up in the very next one